Hello and welcome to my advanced Aridor guide. In this guide I'm going to be going over more advanced tactics that you can use with Aridor. So similar to the Saranoa and Roland videos, I'm going to be going over things that you can do endgame or specifically on New Game Plus. Uh, some of these tactics are viable on a fresh save. It just depends on how quickly you unlock certain things. Uh, but to begin, uh, what does Aridor do? Let's start here. Um, he is a tank and he's also a shutdown so he will not be dealing very much damage generally speaking he can deal some chip damage on counter-attacking physical but his main use is to deny enemies abilities and to ball enemies up around him so that he, they can be then nuked by like a Corintan, a maxwell you know a mage you know any unit roland he's really good at balling enemies up and distracting them this buys you time uh, this creates opportunities for other units. This also relieves pressure from your team by putting pressure on him. Uh, so what are some good items for Eridor? So let's start there. So magic defense items are pretty good on him. Uh, if you expect he might be dying, you can always throw a res earring. Uh, if you beat the game on all routes, you do eventually get two res earrings. So res earring can be good on him. In this case, I'm just running magic defense. You can run a speed item in magic defense. That's fine. Uh, some people like to run, keep him at low speed so that when he uses King Shield, it lasts longer. That's actually a completely viable thing. Um, it will last longer and that he'll be invincible longer, but as soon as the enemies consume their single turn of being furied, um, they will go off and do whatever. But I would say Magic Defense is good. Res is good. If you're going to run speed, I would just run a single speed bracelet um, just to put him at 27 speed. The idea if you're running him, like running speed on him is that he should be provoking every turn and not necessarily using King Shield. So for a speed build, I would just put like speed bracelet on him and res earring so that that way he has uh, some breathing room. Otherwise, if he's going to be King Shield spamming, I would say magic defense. Uh, uh, you can run res earring as well, but if he's getting batteried, he shouldn't need it. But just like magic defense bracelet is fine uh, or whatever you want to run on him. You can run Movement Bangle on him too. This actually can be good. Uh, so if you don't plan on running like Roland or something, Movement Bangle on Eridor actually is pretty good. So like if we wanted him to be a very aggressive tank, um, you can also run Endurance Earring. Something like this is good. Uh, hold on, let me take it from Sarah Noah. He's never really in danger. So this is actually pretty good on Eridor. If he's going to be main tanking for you, uh, his main problem is mobility. Uh, res earring and, mo and movement bangle are very good so and you can run the what is it the endurance earring if you want this will make him take quarter damage below 50 percent so instead of taking half damage from desperate defense he'll take half damage from desperate defense and another half damage from uh, endurance earring putting him at quarter damage so uh, res earring and endurance earring can make him extremely tanky uh, but movement bangle is really good and i'll show why He's one of the best characters to throw on this. If you do not plan on running Roland, or if you're running Roland without a rush build, putting Movement Bangle on Eridor will drastically increase his effectiveness because one of his biggest downsides is mobility. So to use him effectively, so let's, let's start the battle. To use him effectively, he needs either Movement Bangle, he needs Benedict um, movement increase, he needs to sprint, um, he needs teleported with Light Wave, teleported with Kohog, or thrown with Hasapara. So all of these are completely viable things. So the main thing for Eridor is you want to improve his positioning. So if you do run Kohog, I don't, but if you do, this is one of the best characters to run with him. Because what he can do is he can teleport Eridor into the fray, which is useful. Like this almost seems suicidal, but you'll see that it's totally fine. So we can have, we can do this. We could do something. Oops. I could even in tandem him. Uh, I'll probably do that. Let's just in tandem him. We'll use in tandem. We'll dragon shield these just for the hell of it. So Eridor is not going to be killing things. He's not going to be doing like big damage. But what he, what he will be doing is stuff like this. Where he provokes or king shields. So you can see here I can fury these. Uh, I should Fury both of these, to be honest, just based on... Like, 86 is pretty high. So because these mages are Furied, these two physical will not be able to kill him. He has half damage below half health um, in the form of Desperate Defense. 
and he also has 74 physical defense. He also has res earring. So they have no chance in hell of killing him. He's just completely shut down these two mages for two turns. And essentially, as long as you can solve his issue of mobility, whether that be Light Wave, whether that be Hasabara Catapult, or Kohog Teleport, you can throw him into enemy back lines and just completely get rid of the thing that's going to kill him, which are casters. And then as long as he has, you know, movement or res earring or some kind of tank, he'll be able to tank the physical and you'll be he'll be fine. So he can just straight up be thrown and, or teleported and just shut down things immediately. Um, and also you can battery him for King Shield. Uh, okay, so let's just have Hasabara move up. Well, actually she'll die, so we'll have her move up here <laughs> for now. And then Gila can just move here. So the main thing you want to do with him is have him be thrown or teleported and like shut things down with Fury. And what he can do that's cool is he can actually bring these enemies back. And if you are running Kohog or Hasabara, you can actually light wave him after he furies things. And this will force the enemies to chase him wherever he's at on the map. So you can light wave him back to your team. So you can see here these guys are just going to use book attacks on him and do like literally nothing. <laughs> so... He's basically completely fine over there. Um, for this, I don't really care. I'll just do this, whatever. Hit a guy for some damage and then run her back. We're not really focusing on these other units. This is all about Eridor in this case. All right, so we got Kohog. So he can do whatever he wants to essentially. Uh, he'll just run back, it doesn't matter. continue to run back just trying to get it to be Eridor's turn again he is a low speed unit in general so he doesn't go often okay so now that we furied some things we can fury them again the other unfortunate thing is the turn order is like so far back so it's almost like I have to fury them and then like someone else can light wave but you can see there he's able to just like completely shut down enemy units and tank them like nothing. Like most of these things, they're not going to really put a dent in him. He'll, he won't even get to half health from all that spam. Okay, so that's using him offensively, which is good because he can shut down groups of enemies while your main forces deal with another group of enemies. And he can do it very, like extremely well. Like if you put... There's, there's some other items, like instead of Movement Bangle, you could put the Vitality uh, Bracelet on him, or whatever the hell it's called. Uh, that will heal him every turn, so he can just keep furying things and just tanking. And you can even put, um, you know, Res Earring or Endurance Earring to make him even tankier. So this is using him offensively. So let's say, for example, we want to teleport him away now. Now all those enemies are furied, so we can just bring him over. So they have to chase. They have to chase him. They can't. They can't just decide not to. They absolutely have to, which is kind of cool. Uh, well, some of these are gonna die. I don't care. We're doing this video for Eridor. <laughs> I'll show defensive strategies in a second. I might even do it on this map too. Let's do this. We'll be very brave. We were brave. All right. All right, come on. I like how Kohog takes two turns before Eridor gets one in. That's funny. Because his speed is so high. All right, so these are Furied, which is good. He can provoke every turn. Even if he's not using King Shield, he can just spam Fury, and it's good. And here's a perfect example of why he's a good unit. All these enemies, all of them are now Furied. <laughs> even if he didn't get all of them, he'd get a lot of them. But, like, just, the, just his ability to grab everything's attention and pull it off your squishy units in of itself is ridiculously powerful. Right now he has Desperate Defense, he's taking half damage. He's able to tank, he also has res. So just res and Desperate Defense are enough to make him tanky. That dude missed, that's funny. Look at that, it's taking like no damage. He's a really good unit, he's very good. Um, so what we can do here, uh, let's actually use now on him. So he feared a bunch of things, which is good. And one of the big gimmicks with Eridor is Fury is great, but shutting things down is better. So you might be wondering, what do I mean by that? So uh, we might as well use Sprint, I guess. We'll just use Sprint. We already have Fury maintained on some things. So if he runs all the way back here, 
The only thing that can hit them are those archers because of the distance gap. So, like, if things are physically in the way and enemies can't physically run to him, they just can't hit him. So you can see here, like, almost nothing can hit him. Potentially nothing can hit him. Um, well, those archers can, but you get the idea. But if you can body block, you will literally prevent enemies from being able to get to him. So even if they're furied, it does not matter. Uh, they will not be able to touch him. So the big gimmick for him is to fury enemies and then run be behind a group of allies. And what that does, it prevents that the enemies uh, from getting to him and therefore shuts them down completely. So not only are they furied and like trying to focus on him, but they can't physically get to him, so they won't. Like you can see here, that's trying to route to him. Obviously, there's some mages rolling up there about to nuke us. And we're not really trying to kill anything. We're just kind of goofing off, but uh, you get the idea. Um, all right, so one thing we can do here... She'll just heal herself. It's fine. She can't die. That's like the, the big thing in this mission. And he can just keep furying things, too. He can just he can spam provoke every single turn. So if enemies ball up, that's huge. I'm gonna... Let's see. Heal Gila. Using Time Child's shenanigans. Uh, we will do this. Or not. <laughs> I guess we'll haste Eridor. Whatever. So his big two things are being teleported into enemies and furying them, and also furying things defensively, and then leading them to your allies. That's those are like his big gimmicks. So those are the those are the two most useful ways of running him. Uh, King shield spam is really good with the battery. You might have noticed I'm not running a battery like seemingly on purpose for this uh, thing. Uh, you can always battle cry too, so we'll battle cry him, and we can do something like. Um, King Shield, pulling those in for sure, wasting some of their turns. A lot of these enemies are far away too, so we got to be somewhat careful here. We can start trying to kill these, just for the hell of it, really. I could always stop time. <laughs> I could always break the game and stop time. Um, all right, this unit's weird. So, but that's 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 like the main use case, honestly, is just like furying things by and shutting them down using King Shield correctly. Uh, you can get away with spamming Provoke as long as they don't have like a ton of things that can combo attack him and with physical. If he has Res on him, whether from Gila or from the Res Earring, he can be pretty safe to just like push out on his own because you have that extra health buffer. Because you have to consider desperate defenses will trigger twice before he actually dies when he's below half for the first life and then for the second. And then if he has Res Earring with Gila Res, he's basically unkillable. It'll take an extreme amount of damage and pressure for him to lose three lives and go through three instances of Desperate Defense. So he's he's definitely a candidate for Res Spam. Uh, you can literally just, you can, if you're not running a battery at all, you can just Res Spam. Just put Res on him, have Res Earring, just have him Spam Provoke the entire match, have him catch heals uh, as needed. The funny thing too is Kohog's turn back time can get res back on him, which is really stupid, but it is a thing. And you can also turn back time King Shield to get the invincibility on him for a whole turn, which is also really weird. Um, so that's a thing. So <laughs> you can't unknow that now. Uh, so there you go. Uh, okay, so let's just do this. Let's try to kill some of these, I guess. Get rid of some of these chumps. They're going to cast on him because he has low magic defense. So even if he's just invincible, even like enemies don't care and they will cast on him. So like enemy mages will will prioritize him as a target because of his low magic defense and they don't recognize him being as like they don't recognize his invincibility, which is hilarious. And the big upside of King Shield is as he's getting hit, he takes no damage and enemies literally just get punished. Oh, we lost. <laughs> for the <laughs> the Fre if Frederica dies, you lose this one for whatever reason. Um we don't care about defending her. We're not even running full units. Uh, we just care about Eridor in this video. So I'll go over the rest of his abilities too because some of them are worth noting. Um, okay. So we went over teleporting him into position. If you don't want to use Kohog or Hasabara, Light Wave is perfectly fine. I'll show that in a second. Uh, provoke is one of his best abilities. 
against same level enemies, 75% chance to trigger. You're going to be using this, you're going to be spamming this to constantly pull uh, tension away from your team onto Eridor, provided he has, you know, some kind of tank. So for like example, if I want to um, get rid of this, put the bangle, the healing bangle on him, wherever it is, it should be around here. I might not be using it right now, actually. Yeah, bangle vitality. So he just gets uh, like extra health per turn. This allows him to flank because he's just always gonna catch free healing on himself. And as long as he's provoking mages that can actually kill him, it'll basically prevent his death and he'll just be able to run around like, you know, for free and just provoke things like a madman. Uh, sprint is pretty good for dead turns just to give him passive five move. Uh, you do have to spend one TP to do this. So if he's with his team and there's like some time in between enemies, it's usually good to sprint and then have him catch battery so he can king shield. So sprint is really good. Uh, steal back is a passive that makes him take almost like no bonus damage from crits from the back. This is actually quite good. It doesn't reduce critical damage taken. It reduces damage taken from the back. So he can still get like front and side critted for norm normal damage, but his high defense will reduce that. Ram foe is actually a really good ability to push enemies back off of high ground. Um, it also causes him to move forward, so it effectively increases his move. So if you use sprint, move five, and then ram a foe at the fifth move, you effectively have moved six tiles. Uh, this is really good chip damage. This is really good just to crit something in the back. If you crit something in the back off of high ground, it can deal significant damage, putting, you know, dealing like 50% max health to an enemy. Physical counter just makes him counterattack anytime he gets hit. He doesn't have to take damage. He can take zero and he'll still physically counter. They have to be next to him, hitting him with melee. Does not work on arrows. On the attack is a weird one. Raise your strength or lower your physical defense. It's not really useful to do this ever. This is just like a waste of a turn in TP in general. Because like if he's wasting turns to deal more damage, it's it's usually not worth it to do this. It's 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 not even worth running. Like you, ha it's on his kit, but you just don't use it. It's stupid. It doesn't really help you. Uh, Desperate defense. This is phenomenal. You take half damage below 50, at fifty percent or below. This is this plus resiering makes him extremely tanky without any other help from any other units. And just with the one TP provoke, he can provoke every turn. He's extremely tanky because of desperate defense and res. So this is probably like his best, close to his best build. Um, and then King Shield is insane. If you have a battery, it just constantly gu it guaranteed furies for one turn. He becomes invincible for the entire turn, like in until his next turn. So pretty crazy. All right, so we will we'll remove these two. So let's say you're just playing the game without those, which most people don't run Hasabara and Kohog. Most people kind of avoid him because he's broken, so... Let's say you're just playing the game in an average situation and he needs mobility. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. <laughs> All right, so let's use let's just use now in this case. So you just light wave him. It's really simple. You use light wave. It's the best teleport in the game. Look at how far you can go. You can teleport him all the way over here. And then he can run over here and fury these. He only furied one, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I'm gonna see what happens to him. Let's just see what happens to him, because he only got the one fury. If you're gonna be light waving on turn one and fury, you can always just reset until you get the fury you want. Yeah, he takes like no damage. He's physically countering. They're actually hurting themselves a lot by attacking him. <laughs> Alright, let's see what this mage hits on him. Probably like 200 damage. Let's see. Freeze, yeah, 200. All right, his desperate defense procs, but he's pretty low on HP right now. Um, he does get to go before them. He'll catch some chip heal. So obviously, if his fury fails, he's going to take some damage. But you could ha you could light wave him in when he can king shield, and then he's completely safe. He can't take any damage at all. Um, and obviously, you don't want to light wave him into a corner like this, unless there's a really good reason for doing this. Like if you're doing like some deathless thing. And it actually makes sense to do this. Uh, in this case, I'm just like showing how you can get him to a position that's useful. You know, like let's say you want to have him shut something down on a flank really quick. Let's get her out of here. Man, I'm tired of her dying. 
She needs to stop that. It takes so much damage. It's almost like we need like a Flanagan or something. It's crazy. Alright, but you get the idea. You can light wave, you can teleport him. He gets some chip healing. Uh, he can provoke these. He can have a good time. And then the other thing too is revitalize, or I'm sorry, restore is cheap. So you can always restore him. He only took that much damage because he got hit with a spell. So if he provokes all of these, um, <laughs> he keeps missing that mage. Unfortunate. But generally, he's not going to be backed up into a wall. Like, I wouldn't actually teleport him here if I was playing this map seriously. I'm just I'm just showing, like, him getting in, into, you know, into position to provoke stuff. So, so yeah, there's that tactic. Uh, let's uh, leave this mission now. Oh, cool. That did it for me. <laughs> it just reset for me. You have fallen. All right, let's retry. Or no. Oh, yeah, I think, I think it won't start out right away. I think it'll, um, what'll it do? It'll take us back to the thing. Pre-game? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Alright. So it's using him offensively, using him defensively. Um, and then, of course, if things are approaching, so let's just do one more. Let's just have things approach us. In this case, I will battery him. Instead of running a Julio, I'll just battle cry him to speed it up a little bit. All right, so let's do this. Let's dragon shield these just to make us tanky. Cool heads shall prevail. Uh, that's fine. Normally I would Medina her and then put res on Eridor or something. Pretty standard stuff. Putting res on him is really good, as you might expect. So this is actually... Like, almost better than what I was doing. Like, if he just catched battery, like, even just battle crying here. Because then what you can do from here is get the guaranteed king shield, tank the other mage, who should cast on him because it's the only target, and he has low magic defense. King shield is really good just for wasting enemy magic. Like this. This is the perfect example of why king shield is good for wasting magic. Um... Sunfall. Let's not do that. I guess just Scorch this. And she'll just run. So the big upside of King Shield is the initial King Shield is 100% success rate. Uh, let's throw a res on him just for the hell of it. It's 100% success rate and then you can provoke as a follow-up, like almost immediately after. Because he has res on him now, he's going to be pretty tanky. And then another thing I can do is I can have a uh, bulwark be thrown on him. So he has quite a lot of buffs on him right now. And then the other big upside of running um, a fury spam unit like this is he can get enemy healers provoked, which is massive because it prevents them from healing. So... Lionel, Milo, and Eridor all fill this role in this way. Steal back. All right, check this out. Okay. Auto revive. All right, so look at this provoke now. We can get a lot of these. Look at that. And then the thing that's cool is we can just pull them wherever we want. So I can pull them into this corner. I can pull them over here. I can, so in this case, let's pull them over here. He still has one hit of invincibility, I believe, from Dragon Shield. Yeah. He took almost no damage on that crit. I'm just going to keep her in here in the corner because if she dies, we lose. Uh, cure yourself and run. We'll see how long just Eridor can hold down the fort. <laughs> Might as well bulwark Gila. Just to keep her, keep her afloat. Enemies love to attack Eridor because when enemies on the other side, like non-provoked enemies, will tend to attack him. Because when something is on the other side of him, they'll get a follow-up attack, and enemies love to get follow-up attacks. So he has two reses right now, so even if they kill him, it won't matter at all. And it looks like he might tank it too, which is ridiculous. Let's see. I think he actually does tank it. Let's see. Does he? Oh my god. He tanked that. Look at that. That's ridiculous. He still has two reses. He can provoke all these. 
This is the power of a single tank when used correctly. Like, it's so ridiculous. And then he can catch a heal, too. Look at this. One TP heal. Good luck killing him, man. He just keeps provoke spamming. And then I can, like, in tandem here to have him provoke spam those that other mage. And I could even have Benedict come in and heal him. Look at this, this is ridiculous. Get that mage. Yes. And then he can like move. I can like push I can push them this way. The other thing too you can do is you can start to move him towards other things that you want to provoke. So with all these reses, I feel pretty safe, like pretty comfortable just throwing him into the middle of all this. And because <laughs> this is like the big upside, you can set up like huge spikes. So I didn't I I'd like I referenced that, but you can set up sunfalls, you can set up heavy blows, you can set up high jumps, you can set up glacial moons. Look at this. These dudes are just lining up into the AoE. They're perfectly, they're completely helping me out here. Look at this. They just want to get into there. They just want to get in the spam. They love attacking him because he looks like a vulnerable target, but he's actually not at all. Um, she probably should heal herself, but it's whatever. Alright, then Benedict. Benedict will heal her. We just want to make sure that uh, Frederica doesn't get interrupted there, which she could, so. Or no, is she about to go? No, she's not. She still has a few more turns. But look at this, they're just completely crowding around him. And then the big upside is you just keep doing it. You just keep provoking. Look at this. All these are Fury except for, like, one Archer. And then they have to pass turns because they can't get to him. So one unit, and then they want to get as close to, as they can to him, so they'll fill out that pattern... And there's a massive nuke that just killed a few of them to put a lot of them at, like, one-shot health. Like, look at this. It's ridiculous. And then if we want to, just to add insult to injury to these enemies, um, <laughs> we can just start nuking them. <laughs> Gila nuke. So that's, that's, like, a big use of Sunfall. If you have a tank... Just, just a single tank. These are level 47 enemies, but the difference between 47 and 50 is, like, minuscule. Like, they're, like, slightly more powerful. Like, you can see there, it almost just one-shot Frederica, so it's not like... It's not like it isn't a huge difference. Like, it isn't. Um, Alright, so we get Eridor again. He still has two reses, too. And this is with a small team, with, like, no units. So we provoke again. Hitting pretty much everything. We can just stay in this position. They can't really do anything to him. And if I want a Sunfall again, if I had a battery and turn accelerator, I could easily get like a big Sunfall off again. These are just straight up killing themselves on him at this point. So that's what we strive for in these advanced guides is to show you the most ridiculous things that exist in the game, how to use them, and what it looks like. So as you can see here, everyone wants a piece of Eridor. <laughs> Except for those guys. Those guys are gonna do some stuff. We'll kill these two. So this is a team of four units, and Eridor is completely holding down all of these enemies by himself. With, like, minimal help from other units. Maybe a heal here and there, but passive healing, two reses. He still hasn't died yet. He still has two reses. Pretty insane unit. Literally can just spam provoke the whole time and be fine. So don't, definitely don't underestimate him. Honestly, I think I put him at A tier. I think he's, I think some of these units are S tier. I think more units are S tier than we realize. I just put Eridor on fire. <laughs> Shit. All right, we'll do this, we'll do this. Uh, we'll provoke all these. Uh, we'll run over here. I think a lot of units actually are S tier, to be honest. Like, some of them are so good. <laughs> He's just like suiciding on him. They have to attack him, too. They can't not attack him. Fury forces them to attack him. They have no choice, which is hilarious as well. He can, I mean, over time, he can deal significant damage. Like, he is getting a lot of chip damage off from just all the provoke spam. So, like, it's, it's not like he can't get any damage off. He definitely can. We can kill this guy. He was able to completely... Crowd control, like, 10 plus enemies. <laughs> with just one healer and Benedict. Like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Let's be real. This is nuts. 
He just keeps putting chip damage on everything that attacks him. It's pretty ridiculous. No Alright, and then Benedict. Uh, Benedict can put tank on him. I don't, hold on, what does it even do? Let's see. Physical defense, 74. Magic, 21. And then Bulwark puts him at... So 74 and 21. Alright, what does Bulwark even do? At this level. 74 to 79... So plus five for both. That's decent. That's still decent at a high level even. Uh, what we can do here is provoke the, in this way to try to get all these. So you can see that he can hold down like enemy formations. And he doesn't even need that much healing to be honest. Like if you, if you use him optimally. He's not even catching battery. He's just literally spamming provoke this whole time. These enemies are killing themselves on him. And then Frederica is just casually nuking them. So... If you were hoping to see some advanced broken strategies with the, with this unit, uh, I, I, I think this is what I'm demonstrating, to be fair. So, and then we can nuke all these casually. No big deal. Just casually nuke all the enemies. I'm pretty sure this is a difficult mission, too, but like just correct use of uh, a single tank is, is trivializing it. He still has two reses. Too. Keep like keep that in mind. It's so funny. Um, I don't know if I wanted to. I could just have Benedict do this. Help with help contribute to some damage. And then the free heals. Pretty huge heals too. And then yeah, he can just keep doing his thing. I mean, these he can just basically perma fury enemies. Like that's the other thing too. Like he's he's really good at pushing when he gets mobility increase. He's good at defending. Uh, these enemies are forced to stand next to him. They might try to escape the fire, uh, but if they don't, then good. <laughs> They'll just stand in the fire and take tons of chip damage. You can also have Frederica. Uh, one thing I will show, because this is the advanced guide, so we have to cover as many crazy things as humanly possible. I'll show the flame shield nonsense. So he will physical counter things that hit him, and flame shield will also deal extra chip damage. So check this out. So, so he... Sorry, watch. He gets hit. He does it basically doubles his counterattack damage. So pretty crazy. Pretty insane. And then you can always restore him in between turns if he's out of position or if he's like really far out. So you can light wave him into crazy positions. He can fury spam to buy you time so that your your main forces can deal with threats. And then he can always be rescued. He can heal himself every turn. Because once once he gets out there and furies the mages. If that's what you want him to do. As long as the mages are Fury, he can even use healing items on himself and he's fine. Um, but if, if you're going to put him near mages, I'd recommend sending like an Anna, a Milo, uh, a Maxwell, a Roland with him to kill the mages that he Furies. So that way they can kind of break him out and keep him safe. Because once once the mages are dead, he can just keep Furying their physical and he's very tanky. And Anna can even do things like heal him twice and be invisible and all this other crazy stuff. So pretty good. Pretty insane. Uh, I don't even know. I'll just have him pass just to show this dude's gonna hurt himself. Look at this. Look at that. He just took a hundred damage from attacking Eridor. This is the other thing too. Like if you put fire shield on him, he's he's even he deals double damage. So yeah, and then we can just continue to provoke these enemies, and then we can even retreat too. Like, if we want to get out of range of some other enemy mages, we can retreat. Those enemies that are close enough to attack us will attack us. Just, like, prevents him from taking extra damage. So you can always, like, moving and provoking is one of the most useful things in this game. Just, like, repositioning enemies where you want them, getting forcing them to ball up. Uh, these are, these are, like, this is the main thing you want to be using it for. Like, look at how much, look at how much he's, like, time he's bought all these units. We can just straight up kill these like nothing. And then the retreat. Like, the, he's, like, trivializing this map by himself, which is insane. He still hasn't died yet, either, which is also crazy. Because you'd think, oh, he would have died by now, but nope. <laughs> he's fine. Completely fine. In fact, this thing just killed itself. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> There's a bunch of enemies right there. So, yeah. That's Eridor. Uh, Fury is insane. You definitely want to get his uh, reduction, his cost reduction. And you also want to... The other thing, too, is you want to optimally Fury. 
So like I could Fury here or I could Fury here. This is a little bit safer. I can still hit both the mages, which is what I want to do. We Fury, now these mages are completely neutralized for two turns. Essentially, they're just useless now. So he's just turned those big threats into nothing. Uh, they always want to go for Eridor because of his low magical defense. So he's also a lightning rod for your, your units. Anyone can heal him. I'll actually have Benedict throw a tank on him. Bulwark him again. And then kind of like make a wall. So you can see here that he's, you know, he's just going to keep catching heals. Keep, he's just going to keep being okay. <laughs> he's like 85 counter attack crit. Jesus, dude. Then we can put, <laughs> we can put the flame shield back on him. Which is ridiculous. I want to see if he can solo this just for the hell of it because this is fun. All right, hurry up. Oh my god, he, and then it sets the ground on fire too, that's so perfect. It also makes him tanky to fire magic too, if the enemies have that. Alright, then she can heal him again. Dude, he's not dying. Frederica's gonna die well before he does. He's just creating fire tiles. Alright, and then, in this situation, we might as well fury these. Re-up the fury on the guy in the fire, get that guy furied. They have another mage that's coming in, so we have to be aware of that. Look at this. Oh my goodness. They just love to attack him. Uh, he'll bulwark himself. Frederica might die here if they all decide to attack her, so that's something to watch out for. But he's he's able to hold these off. Like, look at this. This is ridiculous. They're all on fire. The funny thing is, too, because they, they're all these are fire tiles around him, I'm pretty sure they're forced to stay in, to stand on them. And there's nothing they can do about it. They're forced to crowd around him, and they're forced to stand on the fire tiles. Just nuke all that. Frederica might catch enough, like, damage to die, though, but it's whatever. <laughs> Look at this. They're forced to stand on it, dude. It's so brutal. Like you, I guess that's another advanced thing you can do. You can throw fire, fire tiles on around him. I mean, if you have enough teammates, you should be able to nuke them down anyways, but this is something you can do. Where he's, he, you put everything, you don't even have to set them on fire, you just put fire counter on him and he furies things. And then he just chills out the entire time, just like, counter attacking. And all, the only spots that will set on fire are the spots he's not standing on. Alright, they're starting to get cures off. Alright, there's, there's a few. There's, oh wait. Was that his first life? Yeah, it was. That was his first life. Or no, it wasn't. He still has it. <laughs> he still has a life. That's ridiculous. Uh, Bulwark you. He's gonna go for Frederica probably. Oh no, Gila. No, not the healer. No, she's dead. <laughs> they finally killed someone. We've been outnumbered like this entire fight. And then the crazy thing here, like the provoke range is ridiculous. Look at that, that's absurd. That's so ridiculous. They're gonna, he's gonna, he went in the fire. Oh my God, dude. It's perfect. It's perfect. All right, we will, can't really do too much here. Flame shield him some more. She, he's actually doubling his damage because of that. So it's actually pretty, pretty powerful. And enemies naturally ball up around him because they're trying to get to your other allies or to Eridor. Um... All right, I am worried about Frederica taking lethal damage. Is she bulwarked? I don't think so, right? Yeah, we'll bulwark her. <laughs> it's just so stupid. This is like turning into like a three-man, four-man, three-man situation. All right, she could she could get shot by an arrow and die. I'm just doing this as a meme at this point. There's his first death. Okay, miraculous light. There's his first death. He finally died. It just took an absurd amount of enemies to kill him. And there we go. We lost. But... Yeah, you can see the power of Eridor. Um, that that oil thing is actually something I just discovered. Where like if you throw down a large oil jug and then Frederica puts fire shield on him and then he provokes, um, that fire damage is legit. That's actually a viable way of completely killing like groups of enemies because they'll be forced to stand on fire because they want to attack him. Every time he counterattacks, he will hit them for fifty plus fifty, so hundred damage. They take fifty damage a turn. That's legit. That's definitely another good way of using him. That um, 
I didn't even think of. And he's, he ignites the oil, too, which is even crazier. So he perfectly ignites the tiles around him, but not the tile he's on. So that's that's a legit tactic there. Um, but yeah, that's it for the Eridor um, advanced guide. Pretty much some of the most ridiculous stuff I can think of for him. Um, like, there's more to it than just provoke spam. It's like you have to know the positioning... Uh, you have to be able to get him into good positions and know how to use him in this way. Um, and I feel like I kind of showed that. Um, obviously, in the one beginning section, he was, like, isolated. You don't want them to be cut off from your team and walled off. That's a dead Eridor long term. Uh, you want him with a flank squad or with some other units to, like, help clean up damage. So, like, he distracts, and then your other units kill, and then he catches a heal and keeps doing that. So, yeah, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this, definitely drop a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing one of these for every single unit. Some of the units I haven't played enough to do advanced guides, so I'm going to have to go through and beat a bunch of chapters with them. Uh, for the units that I can do advanced guides for right now, um, I could probably do one for Benedict, Anna, uh, Gila, Frederica, Hewett, maybe Rudolph. I feel like I should run him more. Uh, Milo, Julio, Corentin. Um, who else? Definitely have Laura. I've already basically... I, I could do some advanced guides for her. Medina, Maxwell, Flanagan for sure. So I, I still need to run... Like, I need to run... I definitely pick Aletta. I need to run, like, Azana more. I need to run Yens more. Like, a lot of these. Like, half the cast I need to run for, like, at least... At least 10 to 15 more chapters before I figure out, like, really ridiculous strategies with them. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Thanks for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next video.